Mongoose Jake here with a quick episode of North Thrifting. And I'm going to do this one in a little, little different than I've done with the other ones being mostly spread out on the workbench and just going over what I found. I'm going to do this in a blaster by blaster case and just tell you about what it took to find it and how long it's been since I've done this video before, which I think it's been at least three months, which is kind of roundabout what it takes for me to be able to even find enough to get a video together. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Ryan Inglestad or, or Captain Xavier who they can go out and get a, a decent haul in a day. Well, especially if you watch Captain Xavier's thrifting videos, like, geez, the abundance of stuff that they have in, in his neck of the woods. The stuff they leave behind is things that I would salivate over and want to get. Now, this time I actually do have a decent amount, which is very rare for this area. It seems like maybe maybe things might be on the upturn as far as thrifting, because one of the very first things is a blaster I happen to love. Of course, you have the Dart Zone Adventure Force Enforcer. Now, Dart Zone Adventure Force, it's both brands under the Primetime Toys Company umbrella. And the uh, Adventure Force version, of course, is that's how you get the Enforcer sold at Walmart. Now, I picked this up at a local Goodwill for $4.99. Threw some batteries in it, and sure enough, it revs up and works. It has no issues and actually been using it a bit. Again, I paid $4.99. Sounds a little high to some of the thrifters out there who have much better finds, but for me in my area, that's as good as it gets. And I love this thing. This one's going to get a little bit of mod work done to it, and it's going to be actually a future video uh, subject. But for those of you who watch this, the uh, kind of heads up and preemptive info is I'm going to actually put this thing on a tripod and turn it into a like 50 cal look-alike because I think they should have done away with all of the uh, belt feeding apparatus and I know why they did it so you can run and gun with it but I want to modify it to run off of a lipo and I'm, I mean that's what, for one I want to but the main thing is I want to put ammo boxes on it, and mount it on a tripod. Just a kind of a fixed gun emplacement kind of thing. And then put a big a big shield on it. Be fun to use in some of the little local wars here, whether it's just, you know, me and the family in the yard, or at a local thing I'm going to start up for once a month. I'd love to have a couple of these and put them on, like, heavy-duty camera tripods. I don't mean Vulcan tripods. I mean, like, big heavy-duty either homemade PVC tripods with a, a little pivot at the top, or if I can find and thrift some camera tripods, because you can buy some of those that are very heavy duty and would actually hold up to a blaster sitting on it with like a hundred round belt mounted in an ammo box on one side for it to come out of and feed into and drop into a second ammo box. That would be really cool. So that's one thing I want to do, and that was one thing I found. For those of you out there who like the classic Nerf Blasters, I had one of these as a kid. This is the Stinging Scarab, if I remember properly. This one, unfortunately, is missing its stickers. But I had one as a kid. My mom had bought for me. And because even as a kid, I was ridiculously into Nerf when I was little. And, of course, obviously that hasn't changed. But this little thing was one that I had. And now I'm, I'm really glad to get it, to put it back in my collection. Because there's a number of blasters I had as a kid that I, I would pay to get them just to have them. As more of keepsakes for good memories. Because I used to play Nerf with my dad and I had a lot of fun doing that. And I had things like the Steam Scarab, the Rattler, and the Wildfire was one that I absolutely loved. And, you know, it just brings back good memories. So... I paid a buck fifty nine, and I don't care if the thing had been five dollars. I still would have picked it up because you don't see these very often. And despite not having the sticker, it's actually in really good shape. So I don't know. Maybe the sticker just fell off because it's not scratched up. It's in really good shape. It doesn't have any of the old darts, but oh well. It's one little fine. I don't care what it was going to cost, but I did only pay a buck fifty nine at one of my local Goodwills. 
I found a pistol that I actually rate extremely highly. I paid two dollars for it. Not that great of a deal, but it's still a deal. And this one's going to be another one that I modify. I've already modified a number of X-Shot Reflex 6s, and this one is going to be one that I either modify myself to keep, or I might pass it along to somebody who might need it more. So, either way, X-Shot Reflex 6s, if I find them for a couple dollars or less, I'm going to always get them, because they are such a good little pistol. Six shots, rear prime, very good power, good amount of uh, space, especially with the updated white version. You've got major amount of plunger tube there for a pistol, so that outperform and easy, easy to mod. They handle high spring loads very well. So for two bucks, I found that, again, I have a couple local Goodwills within driving distance here in town, and found it for $1.99. I actually found one of the Vortex, um, oh, Proton, yeah slipped my mind completely, but the Protons, I absolutely love these plain Vortex, and that's something that I do with my wife and kids. Now, I don't use Vortex competitively, but the uh, Vortex that we do here, it's fun. You know, if you've never used Vortex, go get one, thrift it, whatever you need to do, but being able to angle shots into the wind, just like you would throw a Frisbee, is very fun, and with this being a single shot, and fire, which now I've got to go, i got to dig out a, a Vortex disc because they have so many locks in them. You can't deprime it. That's the only problem with it. But that's, the Proton's one of my favorites. Especially as a single shot, it is one of my favorites and very comfy. I paid 59 cents for this thing. Yeah, 59 cents. We've got another uh, thrift store and I picked this up there at 59 cents. For the insane price of 39 cents, I actually grabbed myself one of the, uh, oh shoot, now this, <laughs> Tri Fires. Yeah, this is a, this is another Primetime Toys product. It's under the Adventure Force brand, it's called uh, the Tri Fire. Very good little pistol. This one has a couple of uh, problems that I'm going to have to tear it down and solve. I've never actually modified one of these, surprisingly. They fire so well, and normally it's just throw it in your pocket and keep it as a backup. So, for 39 cents, I knew it had problems. It will fire. It just will not rotate properly. Like there, and I, there's got a crunch to it, so I'll tear it down, see what the problem is. And while I'm in it, I'll probably use this as a video fodder for modifying it. Is, again, like I said, I have never modified one. I've modified triads and uh, Busby gems and all kinds of other three-shot pistols. Never this one. So that'll be something coming up. One of my favorite blasters, period, is the toilet paper shooter. That's the skid shot from Toilet Paper Blasters. Yeah, that's the actual name of the company, Toilet Paper Blasters. But I found this one for a buck ninety-nine at local Goodwill. And the only problem with it is it's missing the little twist on piece that holds a toilet paper roll in place. That'll be fixable. I've got a couple ideas on how to fix it, and I will do that. But otherwise, it had a jam in it. I already tore it down, cleaned it out. Somebody looks like they just, without any water in it, looks like they had just kept pumping more and more toilet paper into it. Because it had an unreasonable amount of paper jammed into the mechanism. But thankfully, these are really, really heavy duty. Like, the internal components are way above and beyond Nerf blasters. And... It was really easy to tear down, really easy to fix, and works just fine. It's got a monstrous plunger tube back here with a really heavy spring. Would be fantastic for somebody who wanted to modify into a dart firing, which I know some people already have. I've already fired Boomco out of this, and my other one, there, which I have had that for a while. I've already fired Boomco from it, and it does that actually decently well even stock. But for buck ninety nine, not a chance in the world I was gonna pass that up. Now you guys have already seen this if you've been keeping up with the channel. This predator was the one I featured in my uh, predator repair. Yeah. Had a catch issue, had to tear it down, had to fix it. And I never did put it up on the mod video, but I do a lot of mods off camera. You guys don't get to see a lot of the stuff I do. I went ahead and actually brass breached this thing 
I'm going to come on in here close. There you go. You can see that nice and clear. Cleaned up breech with brass aiming right down it. But I took the locks out and brass the breech. This thing actually, I did not do a spring upgrade. I don't really recommend spring upgrades to Predators. I recommend doing, which if you want to see my recommended Busby Predator upgrades for the older generation, let me know in the comment section below and I can do a separate video on it and modify another one. Because personally, these are well worth modifying to use as loner blasters or as just around the house. And the breach work is all you need to do. There's a little bit more involved with it than just that, but mine included re a full relube. I repaired the post that the catch sits on because that's what normally happens. It snaps off. And then, of course, as you see, I used some 17 30 seconds of brass and I completely cleared out the entire breach. I put a few wraps of E tape around the uh, O ring seal location, improved the seal that way, relubed the whole plunger tube and and all the connections and then now it fires at basically elite level or a little above so and that's with no spring upgrade whatsoever then that, that's my recommended ways of modding this and i paid 99 cents for this and i'm sure the one the goodwill i went to they're the one that normally has better pricing and it's just all the way across town on the other side for me but they have the better pricing and that's where i can find things like a 99 cent predator which it did work in the store, so it wasn't because it didn't work. It just, as soon as I got it home, it, the catch snapped. But that was one that you guys have already seen, and it's kind of an old favorite of mine. Saving the piece de resistance would be, I actually found two brand new, in the package, champions. I was shocked. I go in basically every Friday is what I do. Get paid, go out and do, do my little errands before coming home, and I run by the closest Goodwill. Most of the time it's just a run in, I'll pick something else out, maybe you know, find something for my wife that I know she'll like, and generally very slim pickings on the, uh, <clears throat> generally very slim pickings on the Nerf selection there. You might find something like, I actually have skipped over things because they tend to be the highest priced thrift store in the entire city. And for one thing, for example, is a uh, old Night Finder was like eight bucks at the same store. But these were actually only five dollars. They're four ninety nine. I'm sure it having the ten dollar price tag because this was a dollar general packaging. And that having that on there, it looks like they just went to half the price. And for five bucks, not a chance I'm passing up a Busby Champion, which is still to this day one of my all time favorite blasters ever. I mean, ever. You throw a stock on it if you want it, upgrade the spring, paint it up, or or don't. Because as far as greens go, the green and yellow looks, it looks okay. But this is one of the most fun to mod blasters there are. The, the shell looks good, feels good, the grip's good. Grips better than actually most of, barring the uh, the most recent model 1902 or the um, the Revolution. Barring those two, this has probably the best grip of any Busby blaster, and that says a lot because I really like the model 1902 and the and the Revolution. This is right up there with them, and it's a very straightforward look, you know, very clean. But I actually grabbed two of them, which heck yeah. <laughs> 10 bucks for two brand new champions which I mean good grief they've been out of out of production now and unavailable for like four years I think 2016 yeah I think 2016 was the last time that they were new and I might have been able to find some all the way into 2017 but that's pretty much the end of the deal on the champions so I don't know how these were there but it looked like that this uh, goodwill had received a shipment of stuff from a number of stores because they had a lot of new in the package items and just so happened my lucky day got my paycheck found some champions awesome <laughs> but this is Mongoose Jake I hope you do enjoy this kind of a video I, I want to change it up instead of just being on the workbench a little kind of chit chat about each blaster and 
some thoughts on them, what I'm going to do with them. The champions? Oh, one staying in the package. I don't have a new in the package champion. And I've got a project I'm going to be doing here in the next month or so involving a um, kind of historical overlook on Busby as a company and some of the key blasters that I think put them to where they are now. And I need to have some blasters that I think help pave the way. Champion's one of those. Ryan Engelstead knows exactly what I'm talking about, what I'm going to do, and he's the only one. We're going to leave it at that because he's helped me out a lot with supplying some of the blasters. And now I've actually just thrifted the very only brand new in the package champion I have, which will be featured whenever I get around to doing that. The other one, it's going to get modded and it's going to get used. I will probably do a sealed brass breach on that one and a stock attachment and a full paint job because I love the champion and I really, really, really want to do one of those built up in a kind of top level mod. But it's most shaken. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I'm, I tend to ramble, but I love blasters. And I hope that I hope that you enjoy my obsession with them and me sharing that with you. So thank you for watching, especially if you stuck around all the way to the very end.